Hi there, welcome to my channel. My name is Chantal and today I'm at the beach. I had the idea to try and paint with seawater. Let's see what happens. So I've got seawater, I've got a paintbrush, a spray bottle, which I might use depending on how much the water will stretch. I've got my palette here and just a little bit of kitchen roll. I've made this drawing of a lionfish, but it's not very accurate. I did it under a pier in the rain, so it's kind of patchy, but we're gonna be trying to paint this and add bright colors. Let's see how this goes. Let's see if salt actually works. A long while ago, I saw a TikTok of someone painting with salt water, but I don't think they actually used watercolour paint, I think they used a different kind of paint. And that got me thinking, would it actually work with watercolour? Typically, salt is used as an effective watercolour technique. You put the paint down, and then after it sat for a little while, add some salt. And this works, but there are a lot of variables. Firstly, there's the type of paper that you're using, there's also the type of salt that you're using, and sometimes the type of paint. You can also get different results depending on how long you've let the paint sit there before adding the salt. And this can be quite hard to judge, because how wet the paint still is really depends on the paper type that you're using, it's not even the same for each paper, so you have to know your materials really well. And even then, it's a super inconsistent technique. Some days it can work perfectly, you can get amazing blooms, you add the salt and you just watch it separate. The salt almost absorbs the paint and creates these lighter blooms around it. I've used this before and got some really lovely effects. Whenever I review a sketchbook, it's one of the things I always look for because it can vary so much on different paper. But it may not work another day, you could do the exact same method and sometimes it just doesn't work as well, it's so inconsistent. My biggest concern here is simply that the salt water will be going down first before adding the paint. So how does that work? Will it work? When I posted snippets of these clips in the original challenge, which I will leave down below, some people suggested using wet on dry instead of wet on wet. And this could work, but I don't see how the salt would behave differently for either technique. Using salt water instead of regular water, the salt is still interacting with paint in the same way. That could be something to try in future, but this time we're using wet on wet. It made sense to me and it seems like such a fun idea because the entire process is in reverse. We're adding paint to salt rather than salt to paint, it's the complete opposite. It's a cool theory and it was fun, plus the water didn't feel any different to regular water, maybe just a little bit more dirty, but it has come from the sea after all. I used lots of bright colours for this piece and I think the texture really is there. But what do you think? 
I was only able to use wet on wet because it was raining non-stop. There was a small gap in time when I was able to paint this, but it got really cold so there was no way that that page was going to dry before the rain came. And here's the finished painting. It's about to rain any second, so we're ending it a little bit early, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. Honestly, though, I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought the salt was going to do more. If you look close, you can definitely see there's a lot more texture in this piece, and you can see the white speckles in the background, which I really love. But honestly, it didn't do as much as I thought it would. That was definitely a fun experiment. I'm going to head inside before it starts chucking it down. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing so you don't miss any of my future ones and I'll see you in my next video on Sunday. Bye bye.